Okay, welcome aboard to a special edition of Kelly New Mexico Adventures, the cooking adventures, it probably should have been called. But uh, today I'm going to make homemade sauerkraut. Now, you can get one of these cabbages for about a buck and in the store, right? If you go to buy already made uh, sauerkraut, it can be a little bit pricey compared to a buck. So we're gonna go ahead and do it, it's pretty easy and I'll walk you through it. It's gonna take about two weeks to come together. So you'll be seeing uh, this video, that we, you know, every couple days we'll check the progress on it and there's gonna be some removal of uh, yeast and, you know, a couple different things to look for. But, uh, so we'll get started. First thing I like to do is remove this very first leaf of cabbage. It's usually bruised and rough and kind of, all right, that seems pretty good. And now I'm going to quarter this cabbage. You can see the core there. So kind of give you an idea of where to center up. I'm going to core this again. Or not core it again, quarter it again. Then we'll be removing the cores and just simply chopping the uh, cabbage up. Uh, a lot of people will use a banjo or a uh, box shredder or how the heck with that. I'm just going to go ahead and do it the old fashioned way. Go ahead and cut this out. Boom. Cut this one out. And uh, what we're going to do after we cut it up, we're going to put it in the bowl over here with some salt. About, uh, I think, three teaspoons per pound. This is probably a pound of cabbage. Uh, get rid of that. Throw that one out. And uh, it'll just be all natural. That's all you got. Oh, and I will be putting some garlic in, Jerry. Uh, so, and you can put ginger in, uh, turmeric. Uh, there's a lot of different carrots you could put in there. We're going to go with just a basic uh, garlic sauerkraut. Uh, no caraway seeds because the bride, she doesn't like them, but I personally like them. And uh, okay, so let's get chopping. And you can use a uh, you can use a red cabbage, a green cabbage, doesn't really uh, matter. The, uh, some people we put uh, shredded beets into their uh, sauerkraut, which is kind of interesting, you know? So anyway, it's great on a hot dog, great with a piece of pork, great on kielbasa sandwiches, pretty good all around condiment. And you can eat it right out of the bowl, just not even ever refrigerated or canned or anything like that uh, so yeah we'll see how it goes okay I've got a little bit of maybe what is it one fourth in there uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put in a little dash of kosher salt and what the salt will do it'll draw out all the moisture from the cabbage and uh, will help create the brine that uh, so common to sauerkraut well half the cabbage is gone and uh, <laughs> the bowl's getting pretty full so uh, ideally the water, there'll be enough brine in here to cover the cabbage uh, after a day or two. And uh, so I think what I'm gonna do is save that cabbage, rather than get a bigger bowl, for uh, Holuski, make another video out of it. And uh, for, if you don't know what Holuski is, you guys could Google it. Uh, it's a pretty good old fashioned dish uh, from Central Europe. And I am gonna massage this uh, salt, kosher salt, into the uh, cabbage. Let's see if we can kind of get it to start breaking down and drawing out some of the water. Okay, you can take a good look. Uh, it's been about 10 minutes of uh, gently massaging the cabbage with the salt in there. And I did add a little bit more cabbage because it starts to break down, get a little softer, and you can fit more in there. So it looks like there's only a quarter cabbage left for the uh, holuski. Uh, now, secret ingredient, the garlic, of course. I'm gonna go, I don't know, that's probably three cloves right there. Uh, maybe, maybe a little bit more, I'd say four cloves. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna massage that garlic in there, get it mixed in with a salt solution and the, the startings of the brine from the cabbage and moisture being brought out of the cabbage. And then I'm gonna simply just place this plate over top uh, and stick it in a, out of direct sunlight. Uh, he'll probably live, I don't know, find a, maybe uh I don't know, I'll find some place good to hide it though. And, uh, but anyway, let me go ahead and massage this, put the bowl on, and, uh, or the bowl, the plate on the bowl, and we'll just be 
two weeks away, but we'll, you know, every couple days we'll give you an update. And Pam, something just dawned on me. What happens, uh, there's going to be the water is going to rise up. And when you check it, after about a week or so, there's going to be like yeast growing on the top. And uh, it's not poisonous or anything. You just scrape it off and throw it into the uh, you know, garbage. But I was wondering if you could use that yeast to make bread. Hmm. I don't know. Huh. Like a sourdough yeast almost, huh? Yeah. Might Have to look into it. experiment to try. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that feels pretty good. take a look and see what we have huh you can see the uh, cabbage is floating a little bit above the water I don't know if that matters or not but it doesn't give me a warm fuzzy it kind of feels still really firm it hasn't really broken it down at all it's got a smell it smells like a uh, cabbage coleslaw to be honest with you okay so I've, I put the water bladder if you will on top and uh, if you look, it's, it's just the perfect amount of weight to push that cabbage just below the water line, which gives me a, a decent sense of comfort that we're not running some kind of crazy experiment here. And uh, I think I'm just going to go with a plate back on there. And it's, it's a little bit of an air gap there. So I'm going to go with a little more weight and add this bowl just to kind of squish things down. And I'll take a look in the morning for maybe a couple hours. I might add some weight to this. Maybe put flour in there or something like that to, to weight it down more and push that, continue to push that cabbage. But uh, so that's day two. And uh, I don't know if anything exciting is going to happen for another four or five days. If there is, we'll film it. If not, I'll tell you what day we're on when we find the craziness that's underneath. Here it is, day three, and we've had, it looks to be an explosion. I think putting that extra water in might have gone a little too far, but uh, let's take a pull it out of its resting location and take a look. Oh, uh, huh. The water from the bag, I think some of the water from this bag, eh, no, that's about right. Huh. Oh well. Maybe it had a big burp. Still plenty of room. Okay. We'll continue tomorrow. Okay, here we are after eight days. Uh, take a look at it, see what we have. Uh, might end up with some yeast on this we talked about briefly. It smells good. No yeast. Huh. It's looking pretty darn good. Huh. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more water in this bag and put her back in and seal her up. We'll check it in a few more days. We should be edible in another, I don't know, uh, four or five days, at least a week by Sunday. Okay, thanks. Hi, I gotta, I gotta be honest with you, you probably were expecting me to say this is uh, day 14. Well, it's day 21. At day 14, I uh, did check it and there was nothing eventful. Uh, the flavor wasn't as pungent as I like for my uh, sauerkraut, so I decided to let it go another week. And uh, so it's been three weeks now, 21 days, and let's take a look and see what we have. Plates coming off, everything's underwater, bag looks good. The bag looks a little light in water, like some may have leached out into it, and that's not a problem. And I'm looking, and you can see here, here's the yeast now caught up in the ribs of the bowl. Uh, that's not gonna hurt you, that's natural. Uh, probably with a, every burp that came up, I'm guessing, uh, it deposited that before it drained back down in the bowl. Uh, and again, yeah, just wipe that out before you transfer it to another container. Let's give it a taste, and you can, you can ferment this as long as you like. Uh, Unless you're making kimchi, then you have to bury it and, you know, ferment it for like, I don't know, a hundred years. But uh, give it a shot. A lot more crunchy than uh, standard sauerkraut. A lot cleaner tasting. Very clean. It's not 
all that sour. It's sour enough. I could use this now, but I, I would like a robust sauerkraut. So I'll let this go for another week. Uh, but no sense filming that. You could call this done now. Uh, simply wipe that yeast off the bowl. Maybe get rid of some of this water. Put it in a nice container like this. Put the lid on, store it in the fridge. It'll keep for, it's like pickles. It'll keep forever. And uh, you're really good on kibasi sandwich, hot dog, uh, anything you use sauerkraut. A, a regular lunch meat sandwich, like a permani sandwich. But uh, anyway, I hope you try it. Super easy, almost impossible to mess up. And uh, good luck. Hunter. Hey, what do you want? How come you were crying? Did you want some? You want some? Oh, you like sauerkraut? Do you want me to give you a little piece? <laughs> you want to try it? It's going to stain if you drop it on the, if you don't eat it. You don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it.